need to be extremely careful around radioactive minerals, and this is how you can protect yourself. You're most at risk anytime you're in direct contact with the mineral, and it's not necessarily because of the radiation. Many of these minerals are very brittle, which means they create dust, and a lot of it. Accidentally inhaling or ingesting these particles will damage your cells. If the radiation doesn't kill the cell, it can create an error in the DNA blueprint. The damaged cell may lose its ability to control division and will start dividing uncontrollably. You might recognize that process as cancer. Wear a mask and wash your hands extremely thoroughly. You can also wear gloves, but you should still be washing your hands afterwards. Work on a disposable surface such as paper or a plastic sheet. Use tape to pick up particles stuck on fabrics, and always dispose of waste in a sealed plastic bag. Not all radioactive minerals are fluorescent, so sometimes the dust can be difficult to see. Using a vacuum runs the risk of kicking these up into the air. As elements inside the crystals, such as uranium or thorium, begin to decay, they produce radon gas. It's colorless, odorless, and tasteless, so you won't even know that it's there. Repeated long-term exposure to radon can lead to lung cancer cancer and other health issues. The good news is small quantities are easily diluted. So treat your display case or wherever you're storing your minerals as a container. Take your box outside or open a window and leave the room for a couple of minutes after opening a display case. The amount of radon produced by a small collection will dissipate quickly in a well-ventilated space. That being said, you should never smoke in areas where radioactive minerals are being stored. When radon decays, it creates a series of other radioactive daughter products. Smoke from cigarettes tends to collect these daughter products, and if you breathe it in, you'll be bringing radioactive materials into your lungs. Studies show that the dose from radon is 10 to 15 times more dangerous to a smoker than a non-smoker. Your skin acts as a barrier that'll block a lot of the radiation, but our eyes are left very vulnerable. Keep your specimens at an arm's length and try to wear glasses if you can. You should never hold a specimen close to your eyes to inspect it. The safest bet is viewing it behind a display case. That's because these minerals emit alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Uranium minerals primarily produce alpha and beta particles, which don't travel far or penetrate deeply. So distance or a barrier are your friend. For example, the minerals in this display case were still giving me a pretty high reading at about two feet of distance. So I put the majority of them in small acrylic boxes. And after that, the reading dropped to pretty much background levels. You wouldn't want to wear these as a necklace, so it's probably a good idea to keep them out of your bedroom or any other space that you spend a lot of time in as well. Keep your collection small. And that doesn't just mean the number of pieces, but also the size of your pieces. The larger a specimen is, the more radiation it's going to emit. You could have 50 tiny specimens that amount to the same radiation as one large specimen. Once a collection grows too big, it has to be kept in a leaded container with a ventilation system. If you're not willing to go through these measures, it's best to put a cap on your collection. Regardless of how many specimens you have, you won't know what you're actually being exposed to unless you have the tools to measure levels of radiation. A Geiger Müller counter is easy to find and the basic models are relatively inexpensive. I got this one on Amazon for just over a hundred bucks, which isn't much if you're already collecting expensive minerals. Keep in mind that holding the Geiger counter right up to the specimen won't give you an accurate representation of the radiation dose you're receiving. Your annual dose will be made up of the time spent directly handling the specimen and more importantly, the time spent receiving chronic low-level experience exposure from your display case. If your collection gives a reading close to background levels at a normal viewing distance, this won't really be a concern. You can never have a 100% guarantee of safety when keeping radioactive specimens, but if you follow these guidelines, the risk will be at a minimum, and whether or not you want to collect them will depend on how paranoid you are.